Here is a simple valve amplifier circuit diagram which I found in the British magazine called the Radio Constructor. Uh, this one is a 1957 May issue. The valve is an ECL80 type which is a triode pentode. E is a European valve meaning 6.3 volts for your filaments and C is a triode preamplifier. L is a pentode power amplifier, which actually drives a loudspeaker, giving you about two or three watts. I've got our service technician, Phil Moss, who's now going to take you through the circuit diagram and explain things very well for you. So we have a single valve gramophone unit, or record player as we would generally say. It's an AC only job. You can see there is the mains transformer and they are suggesting a double pole main switch with which I agree, but I would have added a mains fuse. So simple secondary, they've got a half wave rectification from the 200 volt HT winding. And down here we've got the 6.3 volt winding. It says 0.6 amps, which is interesting because the ECL80 only draws 0.3 of an amp. And I know that because they were used in series chains in televisions with valves that were intended for series 0.3 amp heaters, such as the PCF80 and the PCC84 that come to mind. So what have we got here? I've already said it's half wave rectified <coughs> using a metal rectifier. Quite a big reservoir capacitor, 32 microfarads. We then got a 5K wire wound, rather large, and another 32 microfarad. So a lot of volts are lost across there. Now the ECL80, it's um, a bit of a weakling of a valve, to be honest. It's um, one and a half watts anode dissipation, I think I remember on the pentode. It was used as an audio output valve in televisions. I think it was also used for video output and even with a small tube as a frame output valve. I have seen it used in radio frequency circuitry um, at VHF, but that's in amateur radio equipment, but that doesn't mean that it didn't work well at those frequencies. There's not a lot to say about this. It's a bit more complex than it could be for a basic amplifier. There was something that when I first looked at the circuit, I thought, what was that about? Um, and which you may not understand. Look at where the earth return, as it were, goes for the pickup. You expect it to go to the chassis. Well, it doesn't. It goes to 220 ohms in the joint cathodes with 180 above it. And it's decoupled by the 100 microfarad capacitor. The reason for that is that the pentode section requires more bias than the input triode. So they have tapped it off at the appropriate level. So you're applying a positive voltage with respect to earth to the control grid, but it is still negative with respect to the cathode by the right amount. Half meg ohm pots, that will be a logarithmic pot that will be for a crystal, perhaps ceramic cartridge. In other words, high or very high input level. Amplified in the triode section of the valve, 220K anode load resistor, lots of decoupling, 68K and an eight microfarad. So that's a very smooth supply there. Surprise, surprise, the anode of the triode feeds via a 0.005 microfarad and a 680K grid leak to the control grid of the pentode. Now the way they've drawn this round here might confuse you, but actually it's very straightforward. The HT here goes to the HT end of the output transformer. The output transformer goes to the pentode anode. Then this connection here is simply the screen grid of the ECL80 goes straight to HT as is frequently done, although I do prefer it to be done through a decoupling resistor. The components that are added, well, I have many a time mentioned this. There is the pentode compensation components, which in this case is a 0.01 microfarad in series with a 10K resistor, and that is simply across the primary of the output transformer. We then go back here 
and we got a 680k. This is negative feedback applied via there to the control grid of the output valve. So reduced distortion in the output section of the valve, but at the expense of reduced gain in that valve. But then they've got the triode here, and although this triode may only give an amplification of times 10 in voltage, that's more than enough to make up for the loss and to give adequate drive to drive what is a very small output valve to its full available power. Um, little surprise they used the ECL80, not the ECL82, um, which will give you more power. Possibly, and I don't know, possibly the 86 wasn't available in 57. In fairness, if this is intended to be built by amateurs and being in radio construction, that is what it was intended for. The ECL86, as I've mentioned before, in connection with a number of record players that used it, it can be a bit difficult to work with because you have a very high gain trio, basically half an ECC83, followed by a high gain pentode. So unless you get your layout right, it does tend to go unstable. Manufacturers had no difficulty. A, because they knew in the first place how to lay things out, and B, if they did have troubles, they had professional engineers who knew how to deal with it and get it working. But if you're an amateur stuck with something that's got the screaming ab dabs, you can sit there and cry your eyes out, um, wasting hours trying to find out why it doesn't work, and it's basically because you haven't built it properly and would possibly never find the fault. As a youngster, I built a number of amplifiers, not with ECL 80-60s, which did have various versions of the screaming ab dabs, and they drove me mad, although I didn't actually ever cry over them. I didn't even cry myself to sleep afterwards. But that's basically it for that amplifier. Um, not as simple as it could be, as I've said, but fairly simple, um, and within the realms of being built by a reasonably competent amateur at home. If you found this tutorial very useful and would like to see more, then please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Patreon, Facebook and Twitter accounts. So far to date we have covered dozens of vintage valve amplifiers and equipment, starting with basic items such as Danset, Bush and Philips record players. We have also covered the Mullard 33 and the 510 valve amplifiers, the mic amp and mixer circuit based around the EF86, the Hacker and Dynatron record players, uh, Leak TL10, Quad valve amplifiers, GEC MOV division, Radford, Pi, Dynaco Stereo 70 and many other British and foreign audio circuits. We are in the process of shooting lots more videos on a regular basis and we will be uploading often. We cover hi-fi, musicians and recording studio equipment as well as vintage radio circuits. Please go to the website for more details.